Today, let's consider the story of a certain disciple. I'm going to talk to you about a guy named Ananias. Acts chapter 9, verses 10, 11, and 12, where we read, Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judah, for at Judas, for the one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, so that he might receive his sight. Now we don't know anything about this man named Ananias from either before or after this meeting with Saul. We don't know how he came to Damascus or what happened to him afterwards. From what we do know, we can think of him as an average follower of Jesus. He was just as, as the text tells us, a certain disciple. You see, Ananias was an ordinary man, not an apostle, not a prophet, not a pastor, not an evangelist, not an elder, not a deacon. Yet God used him because he was an ordinary man. If an apostle or prominent person had ministered to Saul, people might say that Paul received his gospel from a man instead of from Jesus. In the same way, God needs to use the certain disciple. There's special work for ordinary people like us to do. In theory, it really wasn't necessary that God use a man like Ananias for this work in Saul's life at all. Being simply a certain disciple, we may say that God simply used Ananias because God loves to use people, and Ananias was a willing servant. So God spoke to Ananias in a vision, in a completely different way than he spoke to Saul. Saul had a bold, almost violent confrontation with God on the road to Damascus. But Ananias heard the voice of God sweetly in a vision where God called Ananias and he obediently responded to say, here I am, Lord. It's a perfect response to God. In the case of Ananias, the vision from God was specific. God told him about a specific street, that's the street called straight, a specific house, the house of Judas, a specific man, one called Saul of Tarsus, a specific thing the man was doing, he is praying, and a specific vision that the man had had, a vision he has seen a man named Ananias. Now that specificity was necessary and important because God asked Ananias to do something bold and dangerous in meeting Saul, the great persecutor. He needed confirmation along the way that God was guiding him and that God would give him ways to confirm this. The change in Saul was clear in those words, Behold, he is praying. One may say that Saul, this great persecutor of Christians, had never really prayed before. He merely repeated formal prayers. Before this, his prayers were more mechanical than spiritual. Before this, he had never prayed with Jesus as his mediator. Before this, he had never prayed in Jesus' name. Before this, he had not prayed with a humble heart near to God. Saul had said many prayers, but he had never truly prayed until this moment. So here's a question to close with today. Have you truly prayed today?